we build on our history and we come from our history. It, it's who we are and it's who we're going to be. And if we ignore our history, we won't get there. Colorado became the 38th state in 1876, the same year the University of Colorado was established. When you look at historically the migration and development from the east to the west, that there was a certain risk-taking individual to come out to Boulder, Colorado, which was simply a one building on a hill university to lead a training school. You definitely had leaders who were confident, competent, and independent, and willing to move ahead. The first dean that was fairly formidable was Annie Harris. Harris came on board in 1900, and it was under her tenure that the curriculum was changed in the training school to three years. Miss Harris was ahead of her time, even at that time in 1900, to have quality nurses and to educate them properly, that it was going to take more than just two years of an apprentice type approach and into the university level. In the early 1900s, a nurse was expected to work 12-hour shifts, but also to be available throughout the day or night for emergencies. There were standards of conduct even for patients. They were prohibited from using profane language, drinking liquor, spitting on the floor, or throwing garbage from the hospital window. By 1911, student nurses attended five lectures a week and worked in the hospital 10 hours a day, six days a week. The training school would evolve into the University of Colorado College of Nursing. The first students graduated in 1901. World War I and the women's suffrage movement forever changed the role of women in the workplace, providing the context in which nursing education would flourish. While Wyoming was the first territory to approve women's suffrage in 1869, Colorado was the first state in 1893 to adopt an amendment granting women the right to vote. There was a critical shortage of nurses at the start of World War I and during the flu epidemic in 1918-19. While approximately 20,000 nurses bravely served abroad during World War I, it became apparent that nurses needed more in-depth education than was currently available in training schools. The experiences of nurses in World War I and the Spanish flu epidemic set the stage for baccalaureate nursing education. There was a Vassar College program. Their goal was to integrate uh, the training school graduates and students into the university programs. There were only five schools in the nation that uh, took, took that model, and CU was one of them. Martha Russell directed the University of Colorado's nursing program during the formative years of 1918 to 1926. She was one of only six American nurses to be awarded the Florence Nightingale Medal for her nursing service in France during World War I. Martha Russell was a forward thinker. She was, I think, a very dynamic leader and ruffled feathers because she was committed to the training of excellent nurses. In 1920, Ms. Russell initiated Colorado's five-year baccalaureate program in which graduates earned both a Bachelor of Nursing and a nursing diploma upon graduation. Ruth Colstock completed the first five-year program in 1920. It was really the first major baccalaureate program west of the Mississippi in the United States. That alone, the fact that that, that happened, means that, that that kind of set the school on a tradition of being something innovative and unique. In 1922, the University of Colorado Training School for Nurses closed in preparation for the 1924 opening of the modern Colorado General Hospital and the reopening of the Denver-based University of Colorado School of Nursing. 
Once the school was moved from Boulder to Denver, Ruth Kolstock came on board as an instructor. And at that time, Martha Russell was the director. She also applied to be on the Board of Nursing, but was rejected by the governor. And uh, I can find nothing in the archives that tells me why. Probably because she was an outspoken individual. And she was a very strong believer in the independence of nursing education. The Great Depression stalled progress in the School of Nursing. No students were admitted between 1932 and 1936, yet faculty remained on the hospital staff and planned for the day the school would once again reopen. There were many, many nurses out of work because the Depression hit nurses just as it hit the general community. There were fewer surgeries, fewer need for nurses, so fewer nurses were trained in the 30s. In 1941, Henrietta Adams Lochran was recruited to CU to spearhead the modernization of the curriculum. The Cadet Nurse Corps program was established in 1943 by the United States Public Health Service to prepare nurses for World War II. The demand for nurses increased dramatically, outstripping the supply and creating a nursing shortage. The University of Colorado played an important role in resisting the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. Interesting thing about that period of time and in terms of being a student nurse, the directors of school decided that these girls were not going to go into those camps. Ms. Lochran collaborated with West Coast Universities to transfer Japanese-American students directly to the University of Colorado to complete their nursing education. Just post-World War II, there was a, a sudden expanse of need when the soldiers came home and uh, there, there was inadequate care, particularly in the psychiatric field. And so that was one of the first thrusts for doing something about changing psychiatric care. Following the war, veteran nurses utilized the GI Bill to return to school. I went to Colorado to, uh, in 1946, after the war, to start my baccalaureate degree. I got my bachelor's in 49 and at CU and I got my master's in public health nursing uh, under Pearl Coulter. These were very formative years for me at CU. It was at the university that I became um, really professionalized in terms of my career. Finally, in 1949, the CU School of Nursing became autonomous from the College of Arts and Sciences and Medical School with its own dean, Miss Henrietta Adams Lochran. Dean Lochran always got what she wanted, though she never set up arguments. She never lost her cool. She just, in the long run, found a way to get things done. Masters of Science programs in public health, med surge, maternal child, and psych nursing were first established in 1950. In addition to preparing excellent bedside nurses, CU was now educating clinical nurse specialists. Graduate education in nursing came early to CU. CU then started turning out the leaders that shaped much of the Western United States. Clinical specialists, as we started to put those people out into the clinical settings, uh, they had their hurdles to loop too because they came in with a very different knowledge background and a very different, you know, a very different way to do things <laughs> in terms of interacting with patients. Elda Papil, the visionary director of continuing education, joined the faculty in 1956. She was young and vibrant and just as knowledgeable as one could be about the history of nursing. She was referred to as the grandmother of continuing education in nursing throughout the United States. They were committed to nursing education throughout Colorado. And so they would provide whatever help they could do to assure that nurses in outlying communities would have ample opportunity to upgrade their knowledge 
as well as maintain their license. To strengthen the master's program, many faculty were engaged in doctoral education by the late 1950s. The need for a PhD program in nursing at CU was identified as early as the late 1950s by Dean Lochran. During 1960-61, the faculty proposed a doctorate of nursing science program to begin in 1962. The graduate school rejected the proposal. I, I was one faculty member. She went over to the psychology department to uh, try to enroll in a PhD uh, in psychology. And they told her that she had the education of a plumber. You know, that was the kind of thing you, you went up against. Doctoral education for nurses moved into a new phase when the federal government initiated the nurse scientist programs in 1962. Nurse faculty earned their PhDs in nursing related areas of study, such as anthropology, sociology, psychology, and physiology. Nurse scientist faculty brought their newly minted research expertise to the school. Johnson's War on Poverty, the start of Medicare and Medicaid, and the birth of the Community Health Center movement demanded expanded access to health care for Americans. There were many things going in the 60s, women's liberation. We were in the Vietnam War. In nursing, it meant that we had to give up a lot of things that were keeping us down. For instance, standing when the physician came into to the, the desk and serving him his coffee. Our cape was gold and gray because the colors are silver and gold for the University of Colorado. And the nurse in her white uniform and her cap and her white shoes and her white stockings. If you talked about a nurse, that was what you thought. Nursing students traded in their traditional blue and white uniform for a stylish gray above the knee Dacron dress covered by a tunic style apron. The cap was among the first fatalities in the uniform wars. The school's capping ceremony ended in 1966. The mid-1960s was a period of political and social unrest in nursing and medicine that provided an opportunity for the development of the advanced practice nursing role. Doctors Loretta Ford and Henry Silver seized the moment and in 1965 pioneered the very first nurse practitioner program. I thought I was doing exactly what the profession said the profession wanted. What did the profession want? It wanted independence, autonomy, teamwork, self-empowerment of patients. It wanted a health and wellness orientation. I and Henry built the model of the nurse practitioner on that basis. The leaders in nursing at that time had done very well. They had come into the universities. They had established all nursing faculties. But it had, been, it had been like 15 years struggle to do this. And they had a strong identity with the independence of nursing. And so this thing of nurse practitioner, where we had to confer with doctors, help have them help us with our curriculum, uh, have us help us learn things, that they just thought that was a throwback to the old days and they wanted no part of it. I can tell you they're very tough times. When I arrived in 87, there were still people who remembered the initial founding in 1965 and were still, frankly, angry about it. Henry and I got together and fashioned the role as we saw it. So most of them, very early, were all experienced public health nurses. I had been a rural public health nurse in Iowa. In many ways, the, at least our nurse practitioner, pediatric nurse practitioner program, was a social experiment that had to do with what types of change were you going to have to produce in terms of society, in terms of the healthcare delivery system that would in effect allow role shift to occur like this between nurses and physicians. As the birthplace of nurse practitioner education, CU established the nation's most important and longest running continuing education event for nurse practitioners. The Nurse Practitioner Symposium started in 1975 and remained an annual four-day event in the mountains of Colorado until 2010. The NP Symposium attracted tens of thousands of advanced practice nurses to Colorado over its 35-year history and continued to remind the nursing profession of the importance of CU in NP education. 
Colorado was so unique in that we had a very strong beginning with Barbara Redman as the dean. She always had her vision that the PhD was to develop the science and research in nursing, but it would be followed by the doctorate in nursing practice. She was very clear about that. Two decades after planning had begun, the PhD program was approved by the state of Colorado in 1978. I think it was the critical mass of, of doctorally prepared faculty that made a difference. I think it was an emphasis on nursing science and nursing research development and knowledge development that that whole group of faculty that was there at that time had. It was a philosophical approach that that's where we needed to be as a school, as a discipline. I came as a doctoral student. We had faculty who were rule breakers, knew how good they were, and they expected the same of us. Learning was very experiential. Aesthetics was integrated into the curriculum. We ourselves became leaders in pushing the boundaries of nursing. And so when you can reflect on your, and step back and review the discipline and review the professional dissonance, then you can actually make new choices. And then you develop new knowledge that's related to your phenomena, your commitment, your, your mission for the public. Nursing research has been a top priority of the School of Nursing since the 1950s. In 1984, Dean Jean Watson founded the Center for Nursing Research under the leadership of Dr. Marilyn Stember. We started the center in 84. When we came through the Center for Nursing Research and then came out as graduates and began working in there, the first thing we did was write grants. The floodgates opened in terms of funding and by 1987, we were in the top 10 schools of nursing for funding from NIH. I think on every single grant that we wrote, it never occurred to us that we really wouldn't get funded. There was developing science that meant something that would make a difference in patient care. Um, Marilyn Stember and her colleagues at the time had built a rich uh, base on which to build research. There's a wonderful legacy of research, clinical research and health services research here in the college. We had some people who were funded for decades who are well recognized for research and in, in pain and the uh, behavioral interpretation of infant crying. Uh, it was just fabulous work. Jean Watson is an alumnus of three CU programs. She is among a select few distinguished professors in the CU system. Jean Watson developed the theory of human caring during 1975 to 1979 while teaching at the school. As soon as you put caring, as soon as you put the human, as soon as you put concepts like love into a model of science, you have a very different model of science. The Denver Nursing Project in Human Caring was a theory-guided, nurse-managed, multidisciplinary center for individuals living with HIV and AIDS. That started organically from the clinical agencies, and they wanted to develop this program, and they wanted to use my theory as a basis for a nursing center that would serve this population. We listened to the patients and whatever the patients told us they needed or wanted, we created it for them. We created programs from the inside out for them. Dean of the school between 1983 and 1990, Dr. Watson established the Center for Human Caring in 1986. Dr. Watson continues to attract nurses from around the world to study Watson's theory of human caring. I'm sure as you're interviewing students, probably, um, Many of them say, them say they were influenced by Jean Watson. She was so future thinking and so visionary. And uh, I, I would guess that probably anyone else who came through the program at the same time, uh, we all had this feeling that we were exposed to something really big, but we weren't sure what it was yet. And over time, looking back, we were so pleased that we'd had that opportunity. The Nightingale Award for Excellence in Human Caring was founded by Dr. Watson in 1985 at the School of Nursing and is currently awarded by the Colorado Nurses Foundation. In 35 years, hundreds of Colorado nurses have been celebrated.
Nightingale Award started here in Colorado to honor nurses, to honor them, and it spread all over the country. Doctors Jean Watson, Juanita Tate, and Sally Phillips led planning for the nursing doctorate program. The first class was admitted in 1990. ND students were a diverse group who entered nursing with bachelor's degrees in other fields. Their program was rigorous, their socialization to nursing a priority. After four years of intense education and practice, students graduated as advanced nurse generalists. The ND program gave me a very, very broad and kind of broad and deep foundation. It was the 21st century vision. But because we started talking about it in the late 1980s, it was before its time. And so the ND served as a bridge to that DNP. The Doctor of Nursing Practice program was introduced in 2005 and has thrived at CU. The DNP program prepares experts in advanced nursing practice. DNP graduates are advanced practice nurses who focus on clinical care that is innovative and evidence-based. They are clinical leaders who evaluate and develop nursing programs. By the beginning of 2005, we had already gotten regential approval for a transition from our ND program to the DNP program. We were one of the first seven universities in the country to have a doctor of nursing practice program. Our program is really focused on enabling, in particular, the majority of our students are advanced practice nurses, at helping them deliver the best quality care, best evidence-based care possible in t knowing what we know right now. And not only to deliver it, but to know and have the methodology um, to measure how are our patients doing? Are we delivering the best care possible? I think the DNP and the nurse practitioner movement uh, that beginning ND movement are good examples of where education leaders were able to lead practice instead of just react to practice. The College of Nursing has a long history of outreach into rural Colorado, offering distance education in administration, public health, and nurse practitioner preparation. Faculty traveled to their students in Fort Collins, La Junta, Grand Junction, and Durango, contributing to the outstanding competence of Colorado's rural nurses. The University of Colorado School of Nursing is known and respected by school and public health nurses throughout the nation. By 1975, a very interesting thing had happened because Congress had passed the Handicapped Children's Act. And what that really created was a tremendous need for the nurses needing additional preparation to handle children that had a whole variety of special health care needs. And the first program that we got involved with was a program called the School Nurse Achievement Program, SNAP. In 1995, the National Center for Health and Safety in Child Care was established. The center focuses on care, prevention programs, and guidelines for caregivers of children with disabilities and chronic conditions, and promotes health and safety in out-of-home child care settings throughout the nation. Our goal is to prepare uh, advanced practice nurses to have an impact on uh, the field of health care as it relates to children and families with developmental disabilities. I think both Judy Igo and Marilyn Krychek are good examples of people who have ideas that go beyond the traditional role of a faculty member. The CU College of Nursing faculty has been teaching their students in practice for decades, practicing what we teach. Tens of thousands of patients around the state have received evidence and theory-based care by CU nursing faculty and baccalaureate, master's, and doctoral students. We have faculty who practice every week uh, with children, with adults, with pregnant women. One of our shining stars is the Sheridan Health Services, which started as a clinic for children 
uh, in a middle school. We now have a, what I tend to call a full scope practice. So the University of Colorado, uh, Denver College of Nursing has a variety of clinical practice sites. Sheridan Health Services uh, here in Sheridan is one of those uh, clinical practice uh, faculty sites. So students can come here um, while they're in school and in addition to getting their academic instruction, they can get their clinical experience. So they can come here, work with the community, work with the students, work with the kids, and, and gain their clinical skills um, while they're uh, in the program at the College of Nursing. What's really special and wonderful about serving the, the community here is that it's, you know, it's a fairly small community. Uh, a lot of people tend to know each other. Um, I love the fact that we can build relationships with the families that come here for their health care. My teaching is very congruent with my practice. So my practice keeps me relevant. It keeps me up to date. It helps me translate what I'm teaching to the students, to what's happening in practice, and, and helps me do a better job in preparing them to be bedside clinicians. About the same point as we entered the 90s, we began developing other modes of distance education and we began having the capacity to offer online courses, although the first ones were pretty rudimentary. But uh, we were able to bring in Diane Skiba to the school who made a tremendous difference to the School of Nursing. Marie Miller and I got a grant to train all the area health education centers in the state of Colorado to learn how to use computers, including how to get onto electronic bulletin boards, precursors to the, to the web. We started to now have classes done through interactive video. So we were always experimenting. We were always sort of pushing the limits with the technology to say, how do we make learning opportunities more available? And in 1997, we went pretty much full force into a major curriculum revision, as well as changing the way we delivered education. And we've had programs up since 1997 that have been totally online. International nursing scholars have visited the College of Nursing for more than 30 years. The college's international program became formalized in 2000 when the College of Nursing signed an educational exchange agreement with three nursing schools in Japan. Having those visitors come to Colorado and teach us about their culture and have our faculty begin to travel internationally made a huge difference. In 1996, Dr. Pat Moritz came to see you from the National Institute of Nursing Research. In 2002, Dr. Moritz took over the reins of the school as dean. She has overseen the school's move from its small, outdated presence at the 9th Avenue location to the new state-of-the-art facilities on the Anschutz Medical Campus in Aurora. The School of Nursing became the College of Nursing in 2008, reflecting the full scope of education offered from baccalaureate to master's to two doctoral degrees. New theories, new new ideas about nursing, new practices into our curriculum. That's what, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to learn, to learn the best of the best. I wanna be the best clinician I can. I think this school is giving me that. You know, with the rich history of the college, the future is going to be informed by the past, but it's not gonna dwell on the past. The CU College of Nursing Alumni Association supports alumni networking and sponsors the CU College of Nursing History Center a collection of photos, documents, and other memorabilia dating back to 1898. The Nursing History Center was first dedicated in October 1993 and is now located at the college's new home on the Anschutz Medical Campus in Aurora. There will be things in the future that will be just as contentious as the NP was, as the DNP is, as the nurse clinician was, as all of these sort of things. It is not easy. But the fact that you could do it at all is an, an important attribute of the College of Nursing. It's the, the pioneer spirit. I would not have had the opportunities to be as creative as I was at another university. My hope for the University of Colorado College of Nursing is that we will always be forward thinking and visionary in our program development. I don't think that a school that has such a rich history and such a history of the people who've gone through, the students, the faculty, the programs we've offered, the innovations we've done. How could we do anything but just succeed even better?